Okay, hello, Soul Sisters. I am so excited today to introduce you to someone very, very special to me. Um, and I'm going to tell you the story of how this person came into my sphere, because that's also a really special story. But this is my, um, I almost called him my divorce coach. He's not my divorce coach. <laughs> he is my business coach. And his name is Muktananda. Welcome, Muktananda. I'm so, so happy we'll be talking together about the, the awakening that I had through as you helped to facilitate it. Um, and so I don't know if you know this or not, but the way that I was referred to you was through Kate. I was getting a facial highly recommended for everybody during divorce and beyond. And she was, and she's a dear friend. And she was telling me um, about this great new business coach that she had, who was working with her to um, get some, get her shit in order, basically get things uh, in, in place so that she could create this container for her business that was clean and clear and open and allowing for flow and, Everything she told me about you was all I needed to hear um, to know that I also needed to talk to you. So I made a decision there, getting my facial, that, okay, I'm going to call him. <laughs> and I did. And everybody that Kate has ever sent me to has been a gem. And you are no different in that way. So um, what I didn't know at the time was or what I thought at the time was that it would be really helpful for me to speak to someone who has a lot of background in, in business so that I could maybe see if there's any little tweaks I might make to my business in order to have clear, more clarity, have a container that allows for, for increased reach and flow. It's really not uh, about... Um, you know, the financial aspect is only a small part of it, really. It's I, I was looking for alignment and I didn't even really know what that meant, but good thing that you did. Um, and so that I want you to talk a little bit about what your background is and how you come to the table prepared to to look at one's business Um what, what you're scanning for, what you're listening for, how, how you guide, because I think that that has been so powerful and impactful for me in how I, in how I now operate um, and truly in the transition that my life has taken, which is why you are now landed in the Divine Divorce Discussion Series. So take it away, Muktananda. All right. Well, thank you, Stephanie, and to all of your uh, listeners, I'm delighted to be here. Um, well, I've done many, many years of what might be considered to be traditional business coaching of a transformational nature. And um, I've done that on four different continents. I've uh, consulted with businesses and I've led transformational workshops in many different countries. About 15 years ago, I was, and a lot of my work just came from referrals. And I was referred into an organization that um, was headed by this woman, a spiritual teacher named Sai Ma. And I didn't know anything about Sai Ma or her, her, or her organization, but that was kind of normal. I never know much about the organizations before I start working with them. And it's very clear that uh, when I met with her and I started doing work with her and her organization, that I was learning as much as she and her organization perhaps were learning from me. And specifically, it had to do with energy and working in higher dimensions, higher frequencies of energy. Um, I had already done a lot of work in general in that area, but in working with her, she took it to a whole new level. And in fact, she kind of categorized the work I do as, okay, most of the work I was doing was in what she would call the third dimension, which is kind of this kind of physical reality in which we're all immersed. And then um, how do you up the frequency so that you're moving into higher dimensions of consciousness, including moving through the mental, the emotional, the etheric, and then the light bodies. And she said, each of these dimensions are as real as this third dimension, but they work differently. 
And this to me was a tremendous opening because I could see that I was playing around the edges of this work without fully appreciating it. And so she made it very clear to me if I was going to work with her organization, I had to do it from fifth dimensional consciousness. And I didn't know what that meant, but it sure sounded good. <laughs> and <laughs> so I said, I'm in, I'm in. And, and so we worked together and that it's very, very powerful. And I changed my whole practice. I began to recognize that really what I want to do, Maybe clients don't want it, but what I want to do is now focus on bringing energetic alignment to either a person's career or their life or their organization and show them how much more powerful their and meaningful their lives can be or their businesses or their career when they operate from higher frequency energy. And so for the last 15 years, that's where I've redirected my practice. And like anything else, when you shift your identity and you, sh she's the one who gave me the name Muktananda, which means the bliss of liberation. Okay. I would have never imagined that until I actually began to experience it and embrace it. And so that's what I do. I bring energetic alignment to the clients I work with. And so that brings me up to, you sensed that, I presume, because <laughs> that's the only way I attract clients these days. And you have a sense of, and you more than anyone, Stephanie, know this because you operate from fifth dimensional consciousness. This is what you channel from. Because it was so clear to me as I attended, uh, you did a group session at Casa Monobliss. Here, which is a, a conscious living center here in Delray Beach, Florida, which, of which I'm one of the founding partners. And you came and did a, a group reading for about a dozen people. And, I, and I, I was there not so much to have a reading. I just wanted to see, okay, who is Stephanie and what does she do? Because I can't really work with you until I have a feel and appreciation for who you are. I was blown away. I was saying to myself, what the heck does she need me for? <laughs> she's, already, she's already operating on that level and that frequency. But at the same time, I know that um, we can see others sometimes more clearly than we can see ourselves. And so uh, even though I kind of jokingly asked that question, I took this as a great opportunity to work with someone who's already vibrating at higher frequency energy and to discover mutually where is their misalignment, okay? And if there wasn't some kind of misalignment, whether or not you could articulate it clearly, it must be there or you wouldn't have attracted me and we wouldn't have come together. So I don't tell people what to do. What I do is I hold the frequency of higher dimensional consciousness, in this case, the fifth dimension, which is our light body. And because we're all connected in the quantum energetic field, I will resonate with your, your soul, your higher self, whatever you wish to call it. And then the dissonance between that state and the issues you're dealing with, usually the third dimensional, lower frequency, ego-based issues that we all have, and that you're dealing with, the contrast will become clearer and it will surface. Because when you make a commitment or a declaration or an intent to vibrate, to operate from higher frequency energy, anything that's not aligned within you will come to the surface. It's like... You know, it's like, it's, it's almost a law you can go to the bank with, okay? So stuff, you, so here you are, some people get confused. You say, you know, well, I'm trying to be more spiritual. I'm trying to be more uh, awake and, I, and, and I'm holding this intent. And now my life seems to be getting worse. What's going on? Well, that higher frequency intent, it, once you intend it, it starts to activate everything that's not aligned with it comes to the surface, stuff that we was always there, but we would just ignore it 
or deny it or push it away because we were attached to the way things were. And even though we want change, we really want to keep it the same. So there's this paradox of conflict. And that's what showed up. And then all I can do is, well, here's what I'm seeing. How does that resonate with you? And you didn't like some of the stuff I was saying. (laughs) Right? (laughs) This is true. This is true. Because like you said, as we are moving towards change and truly our souls are calling that forward, the personality aspects of ourselves are most comfortable in the continuation of what we know. And so I was in that place of, I I know that I am opening another layer to my work in the world, to my soul's work in the world. And I also know that I have this title, this role as wife, um, that many roles, but in particular, this is the one that I made the biggest change to, um, that is going to be, that that I'm really, that my personality is very attached to right now. And so, yes, so when you shared with me what you saw um, as being out of alignment, you know, this, this particular um, role that as, as a spouse, um, I'll just be totally honest with everybody. It was a point of constriction for me. There, there was not um, flow. There was not freedom of movement um, in that role. There was not, um, I didn't feel I could be fully myself. I couldn't be fully myself in that role. And yet here I am guiding others to be fully themselves to connect with the depth of their soul, to, to be in, uh, connected to spirit. Um, and so, yes, that it was a total, um, you were right. And no, I was not ready at that moment. In fact, I want everybody to know <laughs> that I put um, Muktananda under a gag order, basically, where I forbade him <laughs> to say the word divorce. <laughs> Because I was not ready to hear it in that way. I was not ready to embrace the, I was in resistance, even though it was my own soul's truth, even though it was the truth of the relationship to move in that direction. It had been in process for years, um, but, I, but I was holding tight, really holding tight. And so I told Muktananda, um, I, I am, I probably told you I'm dedicated to my marriage and I do not want you to say the D word at all. Um, and let's move on. <laughs> and it's not like he was, he was, he wasn't like harping on anything or saying, he never said you have to get divorced. That was never, ever part of, of what he just said, look, this is your container. And right now there's some constriction here and there's lack of flow here and it's being pinched off here. I'm using words that were not his words, but in general, you get the idea. Um, and, and you would have better, we, we tried other things too, because he understood. And what I really appreciate about you, Muktananda, is that you respected that I needed to stay committed to that relationship until I was ready to let it go. Um, So thank you for that. I also so respect that you made yourself um, available and like part of your work was to understand my work and not a lot of people do that. This is not your typical coach, guys. (laughs) This is so, he's so beyond and that's why he's such a perfect match for my work in the world and for so many other people too is because he does go beyond and he does see beyond and he does um, state with honesty what he sees. Um, and then when, when I'm ready to hear certain things, I, I can act on them. And until then, you thank you for heeding my um, request to not say anything <laughs> further about it. But we did try other avenues to give me the clarity of a, of a, container that would allow for my work to flow freely while also being in in service to this role that was 
starting to uproot itself and kind of change, change the nature of it. And then literally through the whole process of my divorce, um, Muktananda was a tremendous support to me in going beyond what, because divorce is really a very ripe minefield for egoic thinking. All of the fears naturally get stirred up. All the aspects of our personality that we're very attached to um, take, take hold, try to pull us back down. And so I would call him when I was stuck in those moments, which happened with some frequency. And I would say, I need to see what is beyond here. I need to step out of this and, and be reminded of how, how and where and what my soul is really calling forward and what I'm moving towards, because it's very easy to get stuck in the quicksand of our three dimensional, our, our third dimensional roles and commitments. And just because I'm saying third dimensional does not mean they're less so. They're very important. That's why I took it on as such importance. But I'm just really, really grateful that you, even though I had to move through my own denial, um, because I'm not in it anymore. Well, well, but that's very normal. That's the thing, Okay. The work I do, if you want to give it a technical term, it's called ontological coaching. And the meaning of that is it's how do we redesign the self so that it's aligned with our essence, our soul, our higher self. So I never tell people what to do, but the resonance effect is a mirror. Mm -hmm. And so it was clear to me in Stephanie's case that, okay, her husband, I'm going to just speak Freely? Do I have, can I speak freely? You can, um, I don't know. <laughs> to okay. be honest. I, I want to be, I, I I want to be some... respectful. Uh, it's... Yeah, find some generalized. Terms. Okay, some generalized was that, that her work was commingled with her marriage. And since there wasn't alignment around even who Stephanie is and the work she does, because I think it's safe to say your spouse didn't believe in what you do. He thought it was bogus. And yet he was maintaining the books and records. So he was, his energy of doubt was he being immersed into your soul's purpose, your, your, which you manifest through a business. And so I wasn't saying get divorced, but I was definitely saying, don't mix these energies. Find someone else to do your books. Keep your work separate and sacred. So make sure you have your family life, which is, which is a very important commitment. You have children, that's sacred, keep it there, but don't mix it with your business. That I said was like definitely... I don't tell people what to do, but that's as close as I came to say, don't do this because this is not helping. And so uh, as we just worked through little things, we took little steps. It, it became clear. I was as shocked to you, as shocked as anyone when you said, you know what? I'm getting a divorce. Like, okay. I, I recognize this was a, this was a no-fly zone for me. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't go there. Um, so I was surprised, but I wasn't surprised, okay? Because um, in this instance, and I won't say this is like the case all the time, but in this instance, I really didn't see how Stephanie could blossom and be the fullness of who she is while carrying an energetic drag it's like a like a, a resistance okay and that dissonance became so great that this inevitably in this case um happened mm -hmm. and so um i'll leave it at that <laughs> yeah yeah good exactly exactly Yes. And what, and, and it's, it's been a rebirthing. It's been transformational. I, I am able to see and feel and sense more clearly. I feel as though my intuition, which already was my 
powerhouse is even greater now. The clarity of the messaging that comes through is more, is just higher. Every, everything has up-leveled, if I could use a coaching term, um, without my intentionally directing, you know, any energy towards it, just by what I've released that did not serve, that wasn't allowing me to be in, in my fullest. Um, and I think this is, like you said, this is so common, whether it's a relationship or whether it's a business partnership or other examples of how, how we are in service to something or someone that does not serve um, the, the highest in, in, the, in the best way, in the highest way, maybe it's just a partnership that doesn't work right anymore. There are changes that need to be made. Um, I imagine that is a big part of your work, Muktananda in finding oh, where. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's especially because when, when, when we create a company or a business, whatever you want to call it, there is an energetic seed that gets planted. And so I've noticed in organizations when they get bigger, when, that, when the seed that was planted, which, which contains an energetic intent, intent and the business starts to go off course, it's because it's out of alignment with that initial energetic intent. Now, that doesn't mean a business can't grow and, you know, over time, founders die or some people split up in terms of their partnership. All of these things can happen, but there is that energy, that alignment that is there. And when it gets off track, you can trace it back to that. So you got to go back to first principles because at the end of the day, at least the business I'm working with, they are committed to being conscious businesses. In other words, it's not just about the money. Money is important, but it's not money is a form of energy. So it's not just about the money. It's about, is this work in alignment with my soul's purpose for why I really took birth and business creates so many opportunities for us to compromise. Mm -hmm. And it always seems to be rationalized and justified because you know, well, that's all great, but this is the real, this is the real world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this real world is falling apart if we haven't noticed. <laughs> okay. And it desperately is looking for businesses, people, individual or who are holding higher frequency energy and acting from that place. And so that is the kind of work that I do. And once you get that in alignment, things start to flow. Like once you got into alignment, how easy did it, was it to, to, to find the right solution to the very pragmatic and important aspect of a business, which is know your numbers. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So you're not in fear around money. You are actually, you know where you stand and then you can make decisions that don't trigger fear. That was taken care of like that. It just, just this is the beautiful, the beauty of synchronicity. Once you hold the intent and there's no blockages, you attract exactly what you need and it just falls into place. And then it's, then you become the orchestra leader different members of the pieces of the orchestra show up and you're not only leading the orchestra, but you're composing the music and you know exactly where it has, everything has to be. And then you, then you are a leader, not a boss, not an autocrat, a creator, a co-creator with all of the people that are in your energetic field because you attracted them. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That is so true. And one other thing that we, that you suggested we do, which we did was you wanted to meet um, who's on my team. I have this amazing team member who helps me with all things technology. Um, his name is Ryan. He's fantastic. And um, we went to his house what, a year ago? I can't even remember how long ago, but so you could have a feel for, well, is, is this part of the container also in alignment? And I thought that that was such a brilliant, 
that was such a brilliant thing to do. Um, it, it may look self-serving, but I think Ryan is so good that I'm using him now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It, it, it's served beautifully in every possible way. Um, maybe he needs to have his own live stream video with me in the Divine Divorce discussion. <laughs> but what I, I loved about that, too, is that in, in all ways, literally 360 degrees, I felt like you, you made sure that you had a, an understanding not only of my work in the world and the way that I uh, operate and, and what I do, but who's supporting me in that in case there were any gaps or, you know, fractures, right. whatever you would want, want to call it. Um, and then we've been kind of as a team tweaking some things and visioning some things into being and dreaming um, are you using our creative energy to see what wants to come through anyways and be a force for uh, a platform for that an opening for that. So, and, and this, this, it's my prayer is, is the forward momentum that will ideally carry humanity into our next level of awareness into our awakening so yes, as you said, things are not okay now. <laughs> and one thing after another, after another, after another, ecologically, environmentally, politically, ev in every arena, things are just not okay. <laughs> and, and if I may add, um, you, Stephanie, have always been concerned about the environment. You love animals. You're an empath. You, you feel what's happening. And now you're free to spend your money the way you want you don't have to justify yourself to anyone. You, so you now have opened up the ability to live not only in abundance, but express it in gratitude yeah. without feeling like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to have to explain this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to explain yourself to anyone. How free is that? It's totally free. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. It, there's there's so many directions that I have felt you know literally portals opening up and inviting me to swim through and and be you know wings expanded and just a, an untethering of sorts um, and finding you know because we all have our grounding too and I I like to feel grounded as well so redefining what that means for me and recreating how I want that to be and what my roles uh, how how I want those to serve. So you're right that being free to direct sourcing financial time, whatever resources I have um, towards those who are in service to the betterment of the planet, who are in service to the betterment of humanity and all life for all time. I'm in that, that is why my soul is here. That's why she's here. So yeah, I, I and, just, and you are grounded because you have your children whom you love and you're caring for and you're nurturing and you love animals and you take care of the animals. You have so many ways to express your love in this third dimension. You will not have any problem being grounded with, while allowing yourself to fly and expand what you are able to do in this third dimension. It's awesome. And see, guys, that's just a little taste of the coaching because sometimes I get in my head too. And sometimes I get in the fearful state too. And sometimes I wonder, will I be grounded? And then Muktananda comes along and says, oh, pff, we're not going to worry about that. <laughs> You're already grounded. This is how you are. And we all need these reminders. We all need, I feel, if we're going to grow, not everybody is here to grow to the same extent. Some are maybe not here to grow, but to really enjoy just the gifts of the physical third dimensional world. We cannot judge them. We have all been in that stage too. I call that young souls. Um, so non-judgmentally, but for those of us that are here to grow and those of us who are here to teach and those of us who are here to co-create um, the most beautiful world our hearts know is possible. I feel that we can benefit greatly from someone who 
holds the vision, has the, the background and experience, doesn't buy in to what we, you know, roll in our minds as our, our self-talk track, which just naturally gets stuck and repetitive because that's what the mind likes, repetition. Um, and that's what Muktananda does for me. He, he really supports me in continuing to, um, to un- untether and to go, to go beyond, to stay, stay in the beyond, just as I'm able to do that for all the clients that I serve seamlessly, really. I can tap into that in a heartbeat. Um, I also have the human experience of sometimes getting stuck or feeling stuck and accessing the healers and the teachers to support me in, in the peeling away of that because ultimately that does not serve my highest role here. So that's what I'd say. And it's a pleasure working with you. It really, for me, I love this work. It's pure joy. And uh, I'm grateful that you showed up in my life. Mm, I feel the same. I just, I always say like, I hit the jackpot with this one. So (laughs) I did. (laughs) So let me go ahead and see if we have any real quick. um, We have five viewers on right now, but let me see if there's any comments that I can quickly grab and see if there's questions that we come on. Show. I don't know why it's not showing me the. Give me just one more second. The technology is the hardest for me. Oh, swipe. Oh, there we go. Um, So someone said, hi, beautiful divine goddess. I think that's for me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Um, She, Ellen said, it seems like this is what is happening collectively. As we wake up, every ugly thing not in alignment, racism, environmental degradation, lack of democracy is surfacing which is Muktananda, what you were saying before. Then we have Diane Sherman, who says, Muktananda is amazing, and I'm loving your work, Stephanie. So that's fun. Um, Good, beautiful. So those are the comments. We have no questions, but I'm, my heart is full of gratitude for your role in my life and for what we will continue to unveil together, because I do feel like we are just getting started. Beautiful. I agree completely. (laughs) Thank you so much, Muktananda. You're welcome. And we will be, as you know, in touch. You bet. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.